what we've recognized in, in the analysis then is that insofar as we're attempting to code, um, our coding is going to be related to our sampling, right? It's, it's, it's um, pretty, it can happen, but it's pretty illogical to discuss coding without also recognizing that there is um, a form of sampling that's required to strengthen the code. What we're attempting, why code is the question, why, why is coding important? Coding is important because we need to recognize themes and categories within our data, right? It's these themes and categories and the relationship, not just the categories, but the relationship between categories is, is a much broader um, structure that is going to reinforce our theory. That's the last thing that I want to discuss before I wrap up this section on grounded theory is a recognition of the relationship uh, of the theory, the structure of the theory as a whole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one final, one final picture, and we're going to work our way up from the bottom. Okay. So at the bottom, at the very bottom, and this will be a sort of grounded theory, and I'll put the structure of SD I use. And this is the structure of grounded theory in general, right? There's, there are nuances to this, but this is a structure in general. At a very, very basic level, we have, we have our dimensional relations, right? And we know what the dimensional relations are. It's sort of this, this spectrum, right? Um, in a discussion of this dimensional relationship, a discussion of this spectrum, we recognize that we're going to have something that's uh, it is subordinate to, and what is the dimensional relation subordinate to? It's subordinate to the properties. Right? Properties are more general, um, dimensions are more specific. So the first thing that we recognize is that as we increase, and we can sort of put this here, as we move upward, Concepts become more general. And this is almost always the case, right? The concepts become more general. If you're doing your coding and you find that um, you're becoming more and more specific, you're probably doing something wrong, right? A theory, by definition, is a, is a general concept. It doesn't have to account for everything. I mean, the theory might only uh, and most specifically applies to the selected data. But there is a sense in which your theory is generalized beyond the data. It doesn't have to be, but it is generalized beyond the data. Even if we're only looking at the generalization of the theory with respect to the data, it's a representation of uh, all of that information. All of the little bits of info, all of the dimensional aspects are not going to be incorporated within the theory. If it is, then you're not writing your theory right. right? A theory isn't going to be a very specific account of all the bits of data in the in the, in, the, uh, in the process. We can work our way down to all that technical information, all those bits, all the gradation, all the spectrum, um, but as we move from uh, a lower rung, if you will, to a higher rung, we become more general. So then properties, properties um, uh, facilitate in understanding categories. Right? Properties facilitate in understanding categories. Now, with respect to categories, though, it's not the case that we just have one category, right? In, in um, the structure of grounded theory, what we recognize is, and now when I write category, it's going to assume that there are properties and dimension. So now we have another category, right? Now we have identified another category, but there's also a relationship between each category, between the two categories. There's something that binds there's something that binds these categories together, right? There's something that binds these categories together. And we, as researchers, need to figure out what is the connection between these two categories, right? You might think of, uh, of two categories in your research, whatever they are, X and Y. Um, and X and Y pertain to or relate to each other because, and you give an explanation, right? What I'm doing is I'm linking these categories, right? It's in the association between multiple categories that I then need to identify my main category. And we talked about this as well, right? I need to identify the main category 
of my grounded theory. And we'll just label that with an asterisk. Right? So this, this will be my main category. Uh, and you defend why it is your main category. And what we recognize is that the collection of all of this, right, the collection of all of this, right, is what I'm going to use to buttress my theory. Right? So that my theory is a collection of all of this. And it's far more intricate than this, but I'm not going to draw out the full thing. Because, you know, concepts are in here, the relationship between concepts, subordinate levels of concepts, and, and so on. But generally speaking, we can move from our theory, you should be able, theoretically, um, and almost practically be able to move from your theory to um, subordinate categories. You can pick any one category and then identify properties of that category and go to the dimensional level so that you can methodically go um, from your research, uh, your ultimate research statement, which you, in grounded theory, probably write last, right? It's going to be sort of hard to write your, your research claim, the, the sort of the focus or the, the point of your research until, until you're done. Right? Because the whole point in grounded theory is that we don't really know what it is that we're going to discover. We don't really know what the theory is. You might have some idea, but you don't know what the theory is formally going to look like, sound like, until after you've analyzed all the data. Um, so what we end up doing is we, we move from our research claim after we've conducted all of our research, and then we can see that the research claim is substantiated at every single point, and it should be substantiated at every point. It should be substantiated at the categorical level, categories level, um, propositional level, at the dimensional level. If you're able to do that, if you're able to reinforce uh, the theory uh, at all of these levels, then your theory is grounded. Um, there's a lot more that I could have said. There's a lot more detail that I could have gone into, but I don't want to complicate it. No need to complicate it. I think you get a good visual of sort of the relationship between all of, all of these. The key thing to recognize is that you're not going to have a grounded theory with just one category, right? Uh, it's the, sort of the nexus of categories, and all of that interconnection serves as a substrate for uh, understanding the, the theories as such, right? So you write your theory at last, and, uh, and all of that is built on on the data that you already have. Um, so with that being said, this concludes my analysis of grounded theory. Um, we only have two more to do, which will be ethnography and uh, case studies, and then we will have uh, gone through and discussed um, all of the six forms of qualitative method research. With that being said, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Have a good day.